Hello everyone and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting August 31st, 2015. Let's jump right in with this week's Daily Security Bites. Today's story is news that the U.S. government may impose economic sanctions on governments that launch cyber attacks. This comes from an article on the Washington Post, who cite two anonymous uh, Obama administration officials who say that the Obama administration is writing up economic sanctions for countries that launch cyber attacks and steal intellectual property. And this news comes as Obama's visiting government officials in China, and it seems like China is one of the biggest targets of these type of sanctions uh, due to attacks like the big Office of Personnel Management breach. Now this is interesting news. It's the first time that a government has talked about economic sanctions for cyber espionage. Now I personally believe there's a difference between cyber espionage between nation states for military purposes and actual uh, cyber spying that is stealing intellectual property from private companies. And I think what the U.S. government and most private businesses around the world are fed up with are criminals that are stealing intellectual property and using it for economic gain. And I believe these sanctions are mostly focused on those type of attacks. Now it's hard to say whether or not these economic sanctions are a good thing or if they'll have any teeth. In fact, a lot of people worry about attributing cyber attacks. Are we sure that it really is nation state actors and other countries that are launching cyber attacks? Or could it be some criminal in a different country that's just going through another country as a proxy? A lot of things to think about with these sanctions, but it's very, very interesting. Now, there's really no practical takeaway to these news other than the fact that if these sorts of sanctions start to go through and become more popular with other governments, it will probably change the information security landscape quite a bit. And as a general aside, this means that network visits visibility is going to be much more important. We're really going to want to know what types of traffic are going through our networks and where that traffic comes from. So as you continue to build your network security, make sure that visibility is really uh, one of the things you build on in your network. Today's news is KeyRaider, a new iOS malware variant that steals logins. WipeTech is a Chinese company that recently noticed some malicious jailbroken iPhone tweaks that you could get in China that are actually malware stealing your iCloud credentials. Basically, if you have a jailbroken uh, iOS device and you've downloaded certain tweaks that are located in uh, Cindy and Chinese repositories, you may have this malware. And if you do, it monitors iTunes connections and it actually steals your Apple iCloud credentials. And WhiteTech also found a command and control server that had over 225,000 different credentials credentials for iCloud users out there. So that's a significant number of stolen iCloud accounts and presumably these criminal actors are actually using these credentials to download paid for apps and paid for additions to iOS apps as well. The good news is KeyRaider only affects jailbroken iOS devices. If you haven't jailbroken, you're probably not affected. On top of that, you actually have to go to certain Chinese Cydia repositories and download a, a malicious uh, tweak for this sort of attack to affect you. That said, WipeTech has set up a Chinese web page where you can check your email to see if you're one of the folks that have had your iOS credentials stolen. Now, the practical takeaway here is I probably wouldn't root or jailbreak your mobile device. While uh, power users can get a lot of value from doing so, sometimes security researchers jailbreak iOS devices in order to do research, doing so actually removes a lot of the protections that ensure that you only download legitimate applications from legitimate sources. So for the average user, I wouldn't recommend jailbreaking your iOS device or even rooting your Android device. Today's story is an Apple OS 10 keychain vulnerability. Two Beirut uh, developers found a vulnerability in the OS 10 keychain. This is the mechanism that stores all your passwords in a secure password vault. Long story short, these uh, two developers found some terminal scripts that could allow them to gain access to your keychain without you 
enter in your password. There's a way to get Apple to get the user to click on an allow box, and they found a way to actually write a script to click on this allow box without your user interaction. Now, of course, for this to work, they need to run Apple script on your computer. And originally, some stories said that you had to download some sort of uh, third-party app and accept privileges for this sort of vulnerability to work. But the two researchers in question showed a proof of concept video where they actually could uh, put this vulnerability in an image file or even a spreadsheet or a document. So in some cases, if a bad guy can just get you to download a malicious image and view it on OS X, they could gain access to all your passwords and they could write a script that would actually text your passwords to them as you can see in the video. In any case, it's a very interesting story. If you want more technical details, be sure to check out the links in the blog post. Today's story is a Mozilla network breach. According to a FAQ posted by Mozilla, the company that makes Firefox, an unauthorized attacker had access to their sensitive bug database. Essentially, the attacker gained access to one of the privileged developers' accounts, probably due to a data breach to another website and the fact that the developer reused his credential. In any case, this gave attackers access to many of the security vulnerabilities, the private ones, reported in Mozilla's Bugzilla database. And this included hundreds of vulnerabilities that weren't yet fixed and were still only privately reported. And this even included 55 severe vulnerabilities that attackers might execute code with in drive-by download attacks. So it's a pretty serious issue. In fact, there's even evidence that an attacker actually used one of these unpublished bugs during the time in a real-world wild attack. Furthermore, the attacker seemed to have access to this count at least since September 2014, maybe even September 2013. Now the good news is Mozilla has shut down the account, and by August 27th they fixed the vulnerabilities here. But it was a pretty serious security breach. The best way to protect yourself, by the way, is just make sure you're running the latest version of Firefox. Well, that's it this week. I hope you found it educational. As always, please visit and subscribe to our blog, which you can find at WatchGuardSecurityCenter.com or at blog.watchguard.com. Besides posting this video, I also post the daily security bytes and other content there as well. And by the way, on the weekly videos, be sure to check out that blog post as there's a reference section with many other articles that I missed from the week. As always, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. And you should also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Sometimes I post the video well before I can do the blog post. So if you want them right away, check that out. Anyways, as always, thank you for watching. And here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.